Hey everyone, today I'm going to be making a projectile with almost a completely frictionless surface, which means when you throw it through water, it almost feels no resistance. Whenever you drop something through a liquid, it gets slowed down pretty significantly due to something called the no-slip condition. And what the no-slip condition means is right at the surface where the material meets the water, the water molecules that are right at the surface, they have to match the velocity of the material itself. You can see the no-slip condition when I take this container of water and put some blue dye in it. If I put the blue dye right at the bottom, it kind of stays right there. Even if you stir the liquid, it doesn't really move that liquid on the bottom. Whereas if the dye is more in the middle of the container, then if you stir it, it just gets washed around, you can't even see it anymore. Or if you take a bucket of water and some dye, if you put the dye on the edge of the bucket and then spin the bucket, the water on the edge of the bucket is going to get dragged along with the bucket, whereas the water on the center isn't going to move that much. The reason that the no-slip condition occurs is because right at the surface, it's a solid right next to a liquid. And the liquid molecules actually adhere better to the solid materials than a liquid adheres to another liquid. And so the force is stronger between the liquid solid than between the liquid liquid. But what if there was a way to actually make it so that it does slip on the surface? The no-slip condition doesn't occur. Is that possible? Well, what if you could replace the solid with a gas? Then you wouldn't have a solid liquid interface, but you could actually have a gas liquid interface. Our goal here now is to create a projectile that has a big enough pocket of gas around it so that it can move through the liquid freely and not have these water molecules sticking to it, slowing it down, causing more drag. So what we have to do now is consider the shape of our projectile. So let's say we wanna take this teardrop shake, like a torpedo. This is one of the most aerodynamic shapes you can get. So the question now is how do you make this shape out of a gas? If you try to just make it out of a gas, for example, blow bubbles in water, the bubbles quickly deform and break apart and they just don't even move fast through water at all. They don't hold their shape. So how do you get the gas to hold its shape? Well, the way you do that is by entraining it behind a sphere. So if you put a sphere on the front, then the sphere will entrain the gas behind it. And so the whole projectile will be made completely out of gas, except for the front of it, which is a sphere. But if you take a normal sphere and drop it in water, you'll see that it doesn't entrain any air behind it. And so you don't get a projectile that looks like a torpedo or anything. You just get a ball falling through water with a little tiny bit of air bubbles around it. But what if we don't let the water contact the sphere? Now there's two ways to do this. The first method is by heating up the sphere extremely hot so that you get the Leyden frost effect. The Leyden frost effect is when you have a large temperature difference between your solid and your liquid that it's in so that it flash boils it extremely fast and the liquid never actually contacts the solid surface. In order to do that, you need water that's close to the boiling point of water and you need a really hot sphere. But a better way to do it is just to use a ball that's extremely hydrophobic. Then when you drop it in the water, the air will stay around the ball, it will entrain around the ball, and it should make a torpedo-like shape as it drops through the water. In order to make my sphere super hydrophobic, I'm going to be using a powder called lycopodium powder. I've used this a lot in the past on my channel. It's an awesome powder that's actually made of mold spores, but when you put it on water, whatever you dip through it, it makes that thing hydrophobic. So let's see what it looks like when I drop a steel ball from this height above it. So it's gonna be going pretty fast by the time it hits the water. So it's gonna entrain a little bit of water with it. So let's see what that water looks like around the steel ball. First, we'll try a normal ball that's not hydrophobic. Okay, three, two, one. So you can see there was almost no air bubbles when the ball fell in. Okay, now what I do is I just pour my lycopodium powder on the top here. Three, two, one. Look at all those bubbles. Okay, this is so cool. You can actually see as it falls through the water, it makes this torpedo shape, this teardrop torpedo as it falls through the water. If your ball's not hydrophobic, you don't get that entrainment of air and that torpedo shape around it at all. From the same camera angle now, let's compare and see how much faster the torpedo shape with air around it falls through the water than just a normal ball. The hydrophobic ball hits the bottom around 33% faster than the one that's not hydrophobic. 
So what does this do for our drag coefficient? Well, if you take that entire shape, including the air, and measure the drag coefficient, what you get is that it's actually 10 times lower than if you had a solid object falling through that same liquid. In fact, in 2017, in their journal Science Advances, researchers published an article where they did exactly this. They used the Leyden frost effect and they used super hydrophobicity and dropped spheres to, through liquid to get this torpedo shape. And they actually measured the drag coefficient through the liquid. And what they found is the drag coefficient compared to that same shape of a solid shape was 10 times lower, a whole order of magnitude lower. The drag coefficient was only 0.02 or 0.03, so almost close to zero. This has amazing implications. What this means is that if you can create a significant air pocket around something moving through a liquid, you can reduce that drag coefficient almost by an order of magnitude. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And also hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out the Action Lab Short, which is my other channel where I do videos similar to this channel, but much shorter in less than a minute. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.